Should black men be moving to Brazil for good? My guest today, Charles Tyler, he says yes. He's from the famous Brazil and African American Facebook group called African American Men and Afro Brazilians. Would you date? We're about to get to the bottom of this. Engage. All right, before I get into the excellent conversation that I and Charles Tyler had about moving to Brazil for good, I want to apologize for not capturing this entire excellent video on HD camera. I mean, we could have just re-recorded the Skype session, but I didn't want to lose any of the emotion that was had during our conversation. So, I've added a bunch of visuals related to the audio, but yet, this is a condensed version for time restrictions. And you can catch the entire video by signing up to my mailing list in the description below. So, sign up to my mailing list now, and now, without further ado, here is the shortened version of that interview. I tell you what, the thing is, right, is that I look at it this way, you know, with the um, the um, sensuality of the African American woman these days is going down, and the fact that they want to look like dudes these days, they want to be up with us and everything like that, it's hard to find a good black woman. Then on top of that, a good black man, it's like he's ostracized in America. All right, a good black man looked down as a, you know, you know, oh, he's too nice. Oh, he, no, you know, he's not man enough for me. You know, even though, he, you know, I had a girl one, like I said before in my videos in the past, I had a girl one time who asked me, she couldn't date me because I didn't have a criminal record. I didn't have a criminal record. And I said, I'm sorry, baby, but I guess that won't, I guess you and I aren't meant to be because I'll never have a criminal record, at least I can you know. I will and yes, you know, and you know, that type of mentality. We live in, in today's society of with a post uh, love hip hop NBA wives mentality. And sadly to say it's no longer it's not just affecting our women, it's also affecting our young men. They start to act like with feminine mentalities too as well. And you know, I wanna get when I started traveling. I seen to myself, I just got, me and my, my ex-wife, we broke up, we you know, no longer together, we divorced, and uh, you know, and I, I'm the type of man that needs a woman. There ain't no such thing as that, of a man that don't need no woman. Man, <laughs> let me tell you something, if a man that doesn't need a woman, is a, I'll tell you this right now, is a dead man. All right, it's just that simple. All right, a woman, will get you, will straight instruct you certain things about a man that only a woman can fix. That's why a woman is always behind a man. Okay? Because she still holds him up to some degree if he tries to fall back. She knows how to cook. Cook him correct. He ain't out there eating that garbage. She tries to check him when he comes out he's smoking too much. Okay? And then he keeps him out from all these beds that he keeps jumping into. Uh, you know, because a man will jump into a million beds if he, you know, the thing about it is you get two things. You can catch something or you can catch a bullet in the ass too. All right, jump into a man's bed with his woman. And it's me, I know. All right, so I know that I, I knowing my weaknesses, knowing that I love women. All right, I know I need to get, you know, at my age, I need to get me one woman to take care of me everything like that. But guess what? These African-American women don't fit the bill anymore. And I don't, I don't bash African-American women. I want African-American women to realize why we're leaving, why we're getting our passports, why the good men are going. Going to countries like Brazil, going to countries like um, the Colombia and stuff like that. Those women down there, they got the blueprint. My father gave me the blueprint. My father married his, his second wife, uh, who's from El Salvador. And they've been married 20 years now. All right, they have two kids together and everything like that. 
And despite a lot of things my father done, Shady, she's still with him. He's still taking care of him. And I really believe that had he not been, had she not been around, I would, my father would not be around either. Okay, she's care of Now he was fortunately for him, he met her in the States. All right, he met her in the States. But taking that blueprint, I said to myself, be the fact that I was also married to a foreigner too, all right? But I said, I'm gonna take this a little further. I'm gonna go real south. I'm gonna go to another continent, all right? I'm gonna go all the way to Brazil. And I heard all these things about Brazil and everything like that. I finally decided I wanna come down there. And I did all my research, everything I needed to know. And, you know, when I got down there, here's a country for the first time. You ever get someone who tells you, oh, this place is gonna be like this, this place is gonna be like that, and then you get there expecting that it doesn't turn out that way? Brazil was fit the bill perfectly. It's everything that everybody said it was going to be. All right? And, you know, I fell in love with the culture, and I fell in love with the women. When I got the experience, then I got the experience, not just the beauty. These women are beautiful inside now. Not ready to go to war with you, and not ready to fight you on every word that come out your mouth and every that. They know, Brazilian women, they know the man is first. And they respect the man. Okay, they respect. We're, we're not looking for slaves. We're not looking for Stratford wives or anything like that. We're looking for a woman that doesn't want to fight you on every little thing. Don't like on eggshells around, in other words. That's the way it was with me. I was afraid I'm walking on eggshells. I, I say I might do something wrong. Oh, this thing is going to go off. The things I say, I might do something wrong. I might give a rose to a woman. She go off. You know, I'm like, Brazilian women, they appreciate everything you do for them, especially when you're a gentleman. Okay? They appreciate stuff like that. They appreciate you being there, taking them out to dinner, showing them a good time, you pulling the chair out for them. Stuff here, you'll be called a simp for. Down there, you're praised for. I went to Brazil back in August of 2011. I just fell in love with it from day one. When I got put like this, when I got back to the States, I stayed down there for about three weeks. And when I got back to the States, when that plane landed in Charlotte, and then I had to go to Philadelphia from there, but when it landed in Charlotte, I felt so empty. I felt like, why am I here? Here, this is the country that I was born in. I know the language and everything like that, but I felt like I was so disconnected with this country after that trip. And I was like, you know what? I can't do this. I can't do this. I, yo, I need another airline ticket. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Set it up for, yeah, set it up for the end of the month. All right. Next month, I was down there. And I kept coming down there again and again every other month. All right, I didn't mean to cut out so much, but I know that my subscribers prefer shortened videos. But like I said before, to get the rest of that video for absolutely free, sign up in my mailing list below. And I'll send it directly to your email for free. And remember, as kings, we may sometimes have to make decisions that may drastically change the outcome. But you know what? It's just part of manhood. You may make the best decision, you may not. But figure out your morals and your values and do the choice that aligns with those. And like George Bush did with that war in Iraq, you're just gonna have to live with the consequences. But you'll know that you did what you felt was the right thing to do. And you know what that is? That's making boss decisions like a king. A passport king. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.